what I'd like to do in this video is give some examples of where I have used manual and autofocus. And I've got one example here on the top left, which is a landscape picture, and the others are of wildlife. And the ones I'm going to concentrate here, the one I'm showing first of all, which is the uh, nut hatch on a post, and uh, I'm going to refer to the uh, pheasant later. Now, what you've got here is this bird sat on a post. This was taken with a micro four thirds camera with a 400 millimeter lens on an adapter, manual focus. And this lens had an aperture at f5.6, and I'm about four meters from the bird, which gives me a depth of field calculated with the photo fills, depth of field calculator, of about two centimeters. And what you can see with this picture is that I have just missed the focus. The head is slightly sharp, soft, and the sharpest point in the image is on the bird's wing. What I had to do with this with manual focus as the bird's moving around was pre-focus on the post and try to make some allowance for where the bird would be in relationship to the post. Because what was happening is the bird would fly in, perching on the post, on the post, on the post and then quickly flitting over to the feeder and you can sh see the shadows of the feeder on the right hand side. You've got very little time to uh, focus on the bird so essentially you're with manual focus you've got to pick your focal point set your camera up. The advantage of that is having preset it as soon as the bird perches you're in a position to hit that uh, shutter release and get an instant response without the camera having to uh, wait and take and uh, acquire focus. And just picking up the points here of the sharpest point in the image, just confirming that I was slightly out of my calculation. But with a little bit of, of effort uh, and practice, you can get sharp images. And this isn't the sharpest uh, lens available. This is a very old Tekina 82 400. Uh, I'm using it at 400, certainly on the uh, Nikon camera that uh, I bought it for, it would struggle at 400 millimeters. I'm getting a little bit of benefit, I think, on the micro four thirds in that it's uh, only using a smaller section of the uh, of the circumference of the lens, so the image quality is reasonably good. And you can see here, this is what I pre-focused on. So this gives you an idea of the uh, level of detail the camera is uh, the uh, camera is capable of picking up with that lens. Now going on to the next picture, this was taken, same feeder, actually focusing on the feeder, but this was taken with the Nikon D7000 and the Sigma 150-600. to So effective focal length here was 900mm, the Nikon crop factor being 1.5. Distance again was about 4 meters, and this gives me an effective depth of field of about one centimeter and again if you look at this closer you can see that I just missed the optimum point of focus here I was trying to focus on the eye uh, but if you look carefully you'll see that along the uh, line of the bar of the feeder the feathers are slightly sharper than the eye itself so it's not far off but it's a little bit away and it does highlight that particularly when there's something in, uh, in front of the point where you're focusing and the birds are moving quite quickly, it's quite difficult to nail the focus, even with order focus. This picture of a pheasant's head is again taken at about the same distance, but you see this time the, the autofocus has latched on and really has nailed focus on the eye. And you could say that this is a somewhat easier uh, subject to take the picture of, and the pheasant's head is probably slightly bigger than the whole of the uh, nut hatch I was uh, taking photos of earlier. But these birds are bobbing up and down, picking up uh, fragments of grain that's dropped to the feeder from the floor. So you still have to be fairly alert and you have to wait until they just pause and be ready. But uh, you do generally have time for the autofocus to latch on. The big advantage obviously of the uh, 
manual focus lens, particularly using a vintage lens as I've used here, is it's very much cheaper. And in many situations, you pre-focus anyway, so it's not a massive disadvantage. Moving on now to the landscape photograph here. This again was taken with the Lumix GX9 Micro Four Thirds camera, and I was using a 45 to 150 mil lens, and it was set to about 50 mil. The aperture I was using was 4.2. And so that, with the cropping factor of two, gives me a focal length of a full frame equivalent of about 100 uh, mils. So what I'm doing here is looking to point to focus, and I'm looking to focus a third of the way into the frame. This is the standard advice that you're given. So I could, if I didn't want to focus further away, and I could focus at the furthest point, which is the ridges as indicated here. That's the line of trees. But what I want to make sure of is that the bridge there is acceptably sharp. And I want the gates in front of me to be sharp. So what I'm looking at really is focusing a third of the way into the frame between the gates and the bridge. I'm not so worried about the trees at the back. It doesn't really matter to the image if they're a bit soft but the bridge needs to be sharp. So what PhotoBuilds is telling me for this combination is that if I focus about 40, say around about 40 meters into the, uh, into the image there, I should be sharp from 20 meters, and I'm more than 20 meters from the gates, right the way out to infinity. So I have got a, an acceptable depth of field. And so what I did with this was I just used the rear touch screen of the GX9, indicated the point where I wanted single point focus to acquire focus, and I used autofocus. If you think about it, there's really nothing to be gained by using manual focus in this situation, because I've guesstimated where 30, a third the way into the frame is. And the errors in that guesstimate are going to be far greater than any discrepancies between autofocus and manual focus that I might uh, achieve with the camera. The point really I'm, I'm making here is that for this sort of image, the landscape image, there really is little to be gained by using manual uh, autofocus. In the case of the wildlife pictures, the benefits of using manual focus stem from the fact that you can use vintage lenses and you can uh, and you can uh, save money compared with using autofocus on a more modern lens. If we go back to the landscape image, one thing that we can do to make sure we've absolutely nailed it, to make sure that uh, we haven't uh, missed the critical point, is if we're on a tripod, we could actually check the focus on the gate and then we can go back and check the focus on the bridge. If you're not on a, on a tripod, if you're shooting handheld as I was here, then basically what you can do is you can take different points in the image. So you could take a point with the focus there, you could take a point with the focus on the bridge and you could take a picture with the point of focus much closer in. That way you can be reasonably confident that you've got an image that will be sharp out of that range. What I'm really saying here is that both manual and autofocus have their place. But particularly in the case of landscape photography, if you're being told, possibly on a workshop or on a YouTube video, that there are distinct advantages to using manual focus, you need to really treat that advice with a degree of caution. Of course, you can use manual focus, but autofocus, particularly if you're using live view or you've got a mirrorless camera where it's very easy to select your point, then there really is very little to be gained by manual focus. 
and certainly if you're on a tripod it is very easy to confirm your points of focus uh, have given you the depth of field that you want by checking the focus at the two extremes of the range that you're interested in. Well, I hope you find this uh, video interesting and potentially helpful. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.